I don't think I could separate my identity as an athlete and an activist. Part of me being a role model, I say like, I want to be the person like I wish I could have saw on TV when I was younger. They often celebrate the first, which is like amazing. I'm grateful to be the first, but it comes with a weight. After I had surgery in 2021, I realized how difficult the journey was to get access to medical care as a trans person who does want medical intervention. The Lady Clarendon Foundation was started to give access to health care for trans people of color. one of the biggest forms of activism and resistance we can do is to like show up and authentically be ourselves every day. I was supposed to dance. I was tripping off the song a little bit. Hi y'all! Now every time I come up here, every year, I do something and then for a year, Lesbians Who Tech use that as a gif or a meme. You're not getting me this time. I'm gonna be very here. Lasia, am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yes, Lasia. Lasia, it's great to, that was some great um, basketball. On the aces too? Yeah. Just won the <laughs> And so what I love about this is that the clock hasn't started so we can be up here all day. Hey, aw. So we're going to talk about a, a lot of interesting things today, but I want to start off by talking just a little bit about sports, perhaps the most controversial topic we'll talk about. Um, so what team is it that you currently play for? I play for the LA Sparks. And there was some sort of uh, game that happened if, like yesterday or a few days. Yeah. I don't really know. So tell us a little bit about it if we're not familiar with these finals <laughs> that only a few people, only a few hundred thousand people, people attended yeah. and then only a few people watched. Nobody watches yes. women's sports. Yeah. Uh, so the Las Vegas Aces beat the New York Liberty. <laughs> Sorry, Leanne. Sorry. That's her team, New York. <laughs> they lost. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yesterday in game four in Barclays, which was a really big deal uh, because they had a home court advantage. The Aces had two starters out. Asia Wilson balled out. She's like broken crazy amount of records. Um, and the Aces are a super petty team, which I think is also really funny. So if you watched any of the post game coverage, it was like, yeah. <laughs> it was chef's kiss level petty. And they had someone on there and I'm, I'm not being funny, I don't know the names. I'm getting better though, y'all, okay. I'm getting better. But they had somebody who's like a star player that joined this year. Do you know what I'm talking about? Which team? Uh, the Aces. Candace Parker, yes. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, 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 she's very good. What, do you, what, you wanna talk any trash about? Uh. <laughs> so we can get it like, you know, it can, so it can, go, it can go viral, year? yeah, uh, yeah. No, Candace Parker is, I actually got her shoe when I was in middle school or high school. For a tournament, I won MVP, and the shoe that I got was like the prize was like a signed Candace Parker Ooh. shoe. Yeah, and it was huge. She's Adidas family. I'm not going to talk crap about her, so yeah. you're not going to get me with that one. Yeah. So I have one more question about sports. How, how does one play basketball? <laughs> if you were to describe it to, to um, someone. It's a lot of... <laughs> It's, there's, there's some coordination involved. I yes. saw you do your, let me see. Oh, yeah. Ah, ah there's the meme. I it's, got her. It's, it's, oh. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's Two and hard. a half minutes in. <laughs> but um, we actually have a very big rivalry coming up in the NWSL. Oh, yes, yeah. Angel City fans, anyone? Oh. Old Rain, Megan Rapino. Okay. I love, I mean, I went to a game that they played, that Angel City played uh, a few weeks ago, and Rapino was there, and all I did the whole time was say, where's Rapino? Yes. Where's Rapino? Yes. And there's just video footage of me doing that over and over again. <laughs> so I love Rapino, yes. but not as much as I love Angel City, Los Angeles. That's fair, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so what position do you play? Point guard normally, but this year I played the three, so... And what we, were guard. what we were talking about is like just the pure 
not only the athleticism, yes, but all of the injuries. I know you've been injured before, like you know athletes are, and you came into the Sparks and kind of shook things up and help them kind of be a better team. Would you say that's true? I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm so, very good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what is, what is something else that people may not know just about kind of the day-to-day -day things that you all go through as, as athletes in the WNBA? <sighs> things people don't know about us? Yeah, just the, kind uh, of like the, we I mean, we know minutes, you don't okay. get paid as much as the yes. NBA teams. We know that yes. there's a lot of politics. I know, for, I was trying to get y'all um, uh, flights yes. because that is just such a, mm -hmm. this is such a small thing, but it's a big thing, right? You yes. get tired, you have to you get hassled at the airport. It's a yes. whole thing. So how do you, how do you feel about, because I know you're not shy. I'm not shy. No, yeah. we need charter flights. It's ridiculous. We need, um, we like the players are also, we're so practical because, you know, we're practical, that we have tried to work with the league to create a budget for charter flights. Like, we're not even, you know, to the point where, like, fly us charter every single yeah. game. Also, like, the environment, you know, we think about that. But the fact that, you know, the league is not at a point right now where they're willing to kind of negotiate with us about what charters can look like. They did make strides this season saying when we play back-to-back -back games, they will charter us. Our oh. game happened to be in Phoenix, so we were like, this is our back-to-back. -back. But, uh. you know, like, we hopped home from Phoenix. But it was nice, so... Yeah. It takes a toll on your body. I think the things about sports that people don't realize are something like, you know, your practice facility, where you, how you show up to your training room every day. Like, you, you spend so much time with your team when you don't have the resources you need to do your job. Like, it ultimately hurts your product. And that's yeah. always been one of my criticisms of the league or teams who don't invest the right amount of money to have a good product is like, your business isn't as good. Like, I'm better if I'm rested and not sitting in an airport getting a delay, having to be there till midnight, then going home and getting on a flight the next day. That happened to us this season. Ooh. We were in DC, we couldn't get out because weather, That's the thing, storm, that's yeah. it, right? Commercial flight canceled, so we can't fly out till the next day. Yeah, so what, do you like think, what do you think about, now that we've seen some record number attendance mm -hmm. in both, I'm gonna call it soccer, and basketball, yeah. women's league, what do you, do you think things will change? <laughs> I mean, yes, and no, yes, and no. <laughs> like, yeah. I think they will, I think you can't argue anymore that women's sports is not a viable business. And one of my arguments has always been like, well, who's running the business? Like, you guys aren't good business people. Like, why aren't you running a better business for your, right? Yeah. They keep saying the product is better. The stats are up. And I think you're starting to see, which shout out to the Bay Area Golden State Warriors who are bringing a W team. You're starting to see like, and shout out to the owners who have held our league down. Like, I never just want to bash on them. There's so many folks who have yeah. done a really good job of holding up our league for a long time. And also credit to those owners that are coming in, like, you know, Mark Davis, the Psy family, what we're seeing now here in Golden State, and, mm -hmm. like, just elevating the, the platform and the playing field that's lifting our league up. So I think there is growth happening. Yeah. And you, well, I was saying before that you're not shy, but it's true. You have spoken out about things. Um, do you find that you do that because you want to do it? Do you feel pressured to do it? What's, or is it just an individual t topic? I have definitely wanted to do it for a long time. Yeah. And, um, but I'm, I've been struggling lately with the pressure to do it mm -hmm. now that I've been an established person who has done it for so long. So you get to a point, I think, where you do reach a level in your career or your, you know, public figure persona where now things happen and it's kind of like, oh, is Leisha commenting on them? And that kind of like pressure. Like what I'm trying to do right now? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I get it. Excuse me. Yeah. yeah. Who is pressuring you? Where do you feel that from? Um, I think some of it comes, I think, from myself, honestly, of like, you know, mm -hmm. like you're not that big of a deal. It's fine if you don't comment. But I think some of it does come from... Um, the pressure put on athletes, I think, by the media. Like, I've heard specific pressures um, from folks who've criticized the WNBA or athletes um, with, the, with what's going on in the Middle East right now, that the Aces did not say anything. Um, I've had sometimes personal people reach out to me and be like, you're a role model, you're not speaking out on X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, yeah. damn, like, I, I hear you, I'm trying. Yeah. Um, so I think there are different levels of pressure to that come with this, you know, platform that you have, and it's, it comes with a stage and this microphone, and so it's not something that 
I think I'm above either. Yeah, I definitely feel that. I feel that right this moment. I feel that every day. I'm serious. I mean, yeah. I get pressure from so many different people. I have, yeah. I've invested in a lot of companies and mm. many of the founders are reaching out to me saying the complete opposite thing of each other of what I should be doing right now. Mm. And, you know, it's, so I, I did a podcast about it, just kind of spoke into my phone a few days ago on your first million, just to kind of speak my piece about what's mm -hmm. going on in yeah. Israel and Gaza and, yeah. um, but it's it's an impossible task, yeah. you know. It's it's nothing compared to what any of the people at the time who are being oppressed are going through. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is it is stressful. Um, I'm curious, what yeah. do you think the role of athletes is in having these conversations? Like, I mean, one, I think you have to put the scale of like global politics for athletes yeah. to speak out on on yeah. human rights issues, on domestic issues, like. Where do you where do you think our role is on that? And do we put too much pressure on athletes? Let me tell do you. So have... I think that athletes should have the same standards I think as anybody, especially anybody who has like a public figure kind of role, which is what do you feel comfortable saying? Mm. What is comfortable for you? I do think that. I also believe I can hold two things at once. I also believe that silence is violence, and I've said that even when I'm being silent, I recognize that. Yes. But what I think is even more like compelling to me is you always put the athletes out in front. What about the owners? Mm -hmm. What about, you know, this is why I, I, I've worked with Mark Cuban and I like working with him. One of the reasons I, reasons I like working with him is because he will say stuff and he'll say it out loud. For the most part, it's not every single topic has he spoken about. And you know, sometimes I'll ask him about that. But for the most part, he's taking that shrapnel too, right? And so I think, I think it's, it's always sort of put upon the people who have the most to lose to be out in front yeah. to lose it yeah. as human shields. And so, yeah, so that's what I think about it. But I think, I think this about everybody. I think that we each have our own backgrounds, our own beliefs, our own tolerance for trauma, for pain, for heartbreak, and for there to be this blanket expectation that if you're not speaking, um, there's something wrong with you, especially like moments after it happens. Now this is coming from someone who did reach out to several people in 2020 and May and, and June and say, why am I not hearing from you? You know, so I, I, I have definitely seen it from both sides and I, and I think that there's a nuance that's not often taken into consideration. Yeah. So do you think if you were given 30 days and the promise of grandeur and lots of money, you could turn me into a star athlete? Um, at what level? Star. Like, <laughs> like, like I'm, I'm dunking on fools. Like at the YMCA. At the... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I mean, shout out to the YMCA, by the way, yes. for what they do for homeless people, and I'm very serious about that. Yes. 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 Having been homeless myself, mm -hmm. I'd say you and I go to crypto arena okay. 30 days from now. Okay. And we're one on one in the middle of that, the court area. Is that yeah. what's, yeah. Uh, and yeah. we're. Half court. <laughs> Yeah, we're doing our, uh. and, and, and then I'm able to go boom, 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 run around you, and then swoosh. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm wearing Nikes already, I think, halfway there. Okay. I'm halfway there. I'm Adidas athlete, so this is not, <laughs> it's not. We could, we, could, we could do something. I think we could, yeah. we could improve from wherever you're at now. I know that, that is a, a definitely true. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I know you like to study, so we could get I to do. like understanding the roster. I do. Like, I will watch yeah. the heck out of some YouTube videos about this. Yes. So does my child. So you can just come over oh, and they yes. just watch. Oh yes. I will highlights. study. I'm kind of digging the idea. I know I was kidding, but I'm kind of digging it. Okay, we'll do a little document there. documentary crew. Yeah. And if you can do that, you can do anything. Yes. Okay. I'm here yeah. for that. Yes. <laughs> you okay. can do anything. I mean, I kind of want to be like a broadcaster when I'm done, host, I can be trainer, so this is great, this well, is like next talk level. Talk to us about that, what is, your, what is the next step? Because you're, you're at, I was gonna say the Lakers, same, same. 
Spark. You're at so the I'm Sparks, mm -hmm. and you are considered to be um, like a legendary player. So does that mean how many years do you think you you want to give to this? How many more years? It depends on the day that you ask me. Yeah. Uh, today. I got. I definitely still have some years left in me. Hey. I don't know if I have Sue Bird level years, but yeah. I've got some years. Yeah. Yeah. Which Sue Bird, she played till she was like forty something. She's, oh wow. So she played like a very long time. Can you reveal your age? Yeah, I'm thirty-two. Thirty-two. Okay, yeah. we're ten years apart. So yes. okay. I'm twenty-two. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So <laughs> want to be like you one day. So. Yes. Okay. You'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> And I, I wanted to ask you something, and, and I would like to invite you to not answer it if you find it to be too ignorant a question. Um, but I think it might, it might be helpful to some people, including myself. So when we walked up here, they played Girls Just Want to Have Fun. Mm -hmm. And it tripped me up a little bit. That's why I didn't dance, because it tripped me up a little bit, because you identify as non-binary, yeah. right? Can we talk a little bit about that? Yes, yes. I love to. Okay, so do we have anyone in the audience who identifies as non-binary? Okay. That's awesome. So, first of all, do you remember, well, I'm sure you do, do you remember when you started understanding this about yourself? <clears throat> yes. You wanna know? Okay, okay. bye y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I Kind do of what remember. age, what age and kind of what, what was it that Oh if man, I mean, it's layers. I can remember as early as like six or seven, like always wanting to wear the towel only around my waist. Yeah. Then like I, how much I loved my dad and like the, the things I was emulating from my father and the things I was learning from masculinity. Yeah. Um, that was like, that's like one of my most vivid memories of the young age of just being like wearing the towel. Yeah, And, like, and like, that feeling like it feels good. Yeah. Um, I remember, I mean, in high school for sure, like, wanting to wear boy clothes and pants, which, you know, we know gender expression is different from gender identity, but for me, there was always a, like, I'm both. I was a tomboy, and basically, I just grew up to be a tomboy. That's what I am right now. And um, 2020 in the bubble is one of the, my most, I think, pivotal moments when mm. I, so we're in Florida at IMG Academy in the middle of a, you know, raging pandemic, and I was like, I finally let myself say the words to myself, like in my head out loud, that I just didn't want boobs anymore. Yeah. Like I was like, oh, like I don't want these. Yeah, like and you would have been what, 29? That sounds right. What yeah, I did a little math for you all. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. Yes. Around 29-ish. Yeah, yeah. That, that is in incredible to me because you, there's probably some subconscious thing, like you said, there was something even not subconscious, but there was this thing, this, mm -hmm. I, ha I spoke on a panel in New York a few months ago and the person uh, next to me was non-binary and they said that, I'm sorry, they were trans and they had top surgery and they said that before they had top surgery, the world sounded like an alarm going off at all mm -hmm. times and as soon as they had top surgery, it went silent and mm. all that they wanted was that peace that they felt. They weren't yes. trying to do anything else but find that peace. Mm. Does that resonate? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I would say uh, like a euphoria, a, you know, literal weight lifted. I was like a B cup, so I had a little something, yeah. you know, not much, but I was, <laughs> I was working with something. Um, but after, yeah, it was just uh, like a harmony and a peace, a, like, a feeling at home mm -hmm. more so and then what's been really fascinating has been my like gender expression lately so I grew up super tomboyish wore a lot of masculine clothes for a long time and I was really like pretty okay just being like a chick who wears boy clothes so like yeah. whatever we're calling that like a gay girl right like, like lesbians yeah. <laughs> all the Blue lesbians tech. here yes. who are <laughs> outdoorsy or sporty, or sporty, yeah, exactly. And then I was getting gay. <laughs> and then getting to the point where I let myself realize, like, wow, I don't want breasts anymore. Um, so a lot of my dysphoria before I had top surgery was around like my femininity. And so I had top surgery, 
kind of fast forwarding the, and the more masculine I've become, the more I've been able like, to embrace my femininity again. And so it's kind of like, I joke yeah. with my wife and people, I'm like, I became a boy to become a girl again. Yeah. So it's like, I'm a but boy that, who wears dresses. But that's the non-binary of it yes. all, right? So like, like, girl to me is fine, like on stage. Like people, yeah. I'm not a they them, shout out to the they thems, but I'm a, like all of them. So and I'm it's like, different for everyone, so I'm not yes. doing a blanket statement, but is it like, that's the point of it all, right? Is that mm -hmm. you just can't define me yes. in so many words. Yes. I am, I contain multitudes. Yes. That's what that wow, is. Wow, you really see me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Aw. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the cool part is like, I've had to get over my own pressure and my own boxes and my own internalized transphobia and the, and that everyone's looking at you a certain way, which you know, people do. Mm. But now I'm just like, oh, I'm fabulous. Of course they're looking at yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. But, getting to the place where like I will wear girl clothes again because for so long it was this battle between myself of like well I can't dress that way or is someone like shout out to my wife wherever she is because hey. she's like the safest person in the world where like we would go somewhere for dinner in our little area or like I would wear the outfits I wasn't ready to wear out of the house yet mm -hmm. so I would wear like something femme and it's like funny because like for all intents and purposes like I was assigned female at birth and like now I'm feeling weird about wearing girl clothes it's like this full circle where I was like I was a girl who wore boy clothes but I became a boy to become a girl and now it's weird to wear girl clothes right like that's gender <laughs> and so I had to just free myself from all of that first and foremost to get to the place where I can just be like the multitudes like whoever I am like I actually get to show up every day and like look at my closet and be like who do I want to be today what do yeah. I want to wear today what gender is showing up for me today yeah I mean I want to look at that closet full of hoodies and just, Scott, that's like, all we, yeah, like that's that. all we want to do is pick out the right hoodie for that day. <laughs> I have a lot of hoodies, a lot of hoodies. <laughs> You're in the WNBA, and I now know that that's basketball. Right. <laughs> when you, with the, the video said it, it's all over the news. When you came out, so to speak, as they call it. Yes. As, tr as non binary. Um, do you consider yourself trans as well? Yeah, I do. Like yes. Yeah. yeah. One of the mul multiple things. Yes. How was that received, as far as you could tell, from the league being called the women's sports sport word? Yes. <laughs> National, <laughs> National basketball. <laughs> Guys, yeah. come on. Yeah. Get, okay, it, okay. Co get it together. <laughs> How, the national, the Women's National Basketball Association. I do want to co-own a league, uh, a team yes. soon, so I better get it together. It's better get it together. How do you think that was received? Um, internally, it was received very well. I will say from our commissioner, Kathy. Um, we had really good one-on-one -on -one conversations, conversations with Terry Jackson, our executive director of our union, present on those calls. Mm -hmm. Um, and the biggest thing for me was making sure that they were ready to put a stake in the ground for me. Mm -hmm. I did not, and I was not willing to become a debate or to become someone's talking point or to become a, you know, far right, some agenda item. And so yeah. I was very clear with the league of like, I need you to be ready with your statement. I need you to support me on this. And I think that's one of the beautiful aspects of leadership of like, when I came out sharing my boobs, lack thereof online, basically just posted a picture being like, I don't Haven't have we all? anymore. Right. <laughs> Covered my nipples. <laughs> and then the league put out their statement. It was like, I think everyone who then turned to be like, what does this mean? What does this mean? Was like, oh, the statement means yeah. Lasia belongs in our league. Great. Yeah. And then I think that set the tone for the rest of the league of like, yeah, Lasia belongs in this league. So I think like, I'm really proud of myself for advocating for what I needed and then the league stepping up to do it to show like the strength of leadership yeah. and instead of letting it turn into a debate. I mean, odds say that there are going to be more, that there are today some women in the, um, in the league who, who want this, who just didn't have necessarily the courage yet to do that. You would be a trailblazer whether or not you would mm -hmm. call yourself that, right? Wouldn't, you, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have just a couple of minutes left, so I thought I'd talk about something really light, um, religion. 
Yeah, okay. That's great. Your faith or lack thereof in a God. I have a podcast called Demystifying Faith that you can find anywhere you listen to your favorite podcasts. And I am an atheist and I, and I talk to people about their faith. Any atheists in the building? Everyone, thank you. Your faith is part, a big part, or at least that's what the YouTubes say, yeah, yeah. is a big part of your identity, right? Or at least it, it means something to you, yes, right? absolutely. What kind of conversations did you have with yourself and with your higher power when you were thinking about, when you were going through this? I had a lot of angry ones. Mm -hmm. A lot of, like, I would say a lot of running away ones. And then when I, the story, the way I tell it is like, I was okay just being this, oh my God, 50 seconds, we got time. Yeah. Or no, we won't go. Uh, how I was just cool being this chick who was masculine and I like found my lane. I was like, I'm an activist, I speak out, I'm good, I'm happy, I'm finally okay. But I would have, you know, the mirrors, I would wear the sports bras to, I didn't even necessarily realize I was binding at the time by just always kind of wearing mm. my sports bras because that's mm. what we do as gay people, like we wear sports bras. Yeah. And everywhere, with every shirt. Preach. <laughs> right. And for me, there was like a tapping on my shoulder, or like not letting me just be okay with that. Mm -hmm. There was something that for me, it's God was just like, no, I didn't create you to be less than a whole person. Mm -hmm. So like, you need to look at this. And I think when we heal parts of ourselves, then of course, like the new stuff comes up that you're ready to deal with. So just kept tapping the shoulder. And I was like, God, like, I don't have time for this. Like, I, that is actually what I said, like, mm -hmm. no. Like a petulant teenager slamming yes. the door. Yes. Yeah. I was like, no. Like, yeah. I'm good. Like, for real. Like, you need to get out of my face right now because wow. I'm tired of this shit. Like, you I'm You talk tired. back to God. Yes. That's, that's bold. Yes. <laughs> I'm still here, so, you know. Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm just tired of going through these journeys and these undiscovery. Like, girl, I'm tired. Like, yeah. And then I had a lot of anger, too, of just, like, why do I have to keep going through such tough journeys and tough moments and heartbreaking moments um, that because I think loving truly, truly, when you look at your deepest stuff in the mirror and to love yourself, I think for me has been one of the hardest things that, that I've ever done and to really show up every day and love yourself to the point where like, you'll yeah. become a boy to become a girl, to like yeah. live your best life. Um, so eventually I finally was just like, okay, like I will, I think in the bubble, like in the, it took a pandemic in the middle of Florida IMG Academy for me to be like, okay, yeah, I don't want these. Yeah. And thankfully I did, but it's, it's hard. And so I have a very like, very human relationship with God in terms of like, I be cussing God out sometimes. Like I talk to them like, you know, that good friend who you're having a good argument with. Yeah, yeah. Understood. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I, I don't believe in a in that higher power, mm -hmm. so to speak. But I have I learned and understand it, and I I am very grateful that so many people have that in their yeah. lives. You know, yeah. um, I appreciate you, and I'm so glad you exist in this world. So thank you for that. Let's give it up. <laughs> and. With our last few seconds, because they added a little time for us. I know. Baller. Oh, reparations, yes. They knew they had a future baller here. She's rec they're reclaiming their time. Um, I just want to use a little bit of time to talk about my hoodie. Yes. It's the school's consent project. And um, does anybody know Jody Comer from Killing Eve? Anybody? <laughs> JoJo and I are like this. Actually, no, I, I worked on a, her Broadway play that she won the Tony for this year. Um, I did multiple things. One is I brought 500 students who could not afford it to be able to see it because it was such an important play about consent. Uh, I also did interviews like this with Jody on stage and a few other things. And this is the one of the two um, uh, organizations that she supported through that work. And so if you go to the school, uh, school's consent project uh, website, you can donate, you can learn more, and there's a lot there that I would love for you all to take a look at. Thank you. Yes. Oh. 
Yeah, yeah. And we need a handshake. A handshake. Oh, I can't. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Fist bump. A bump. We don't get no music. Yeah. Aww. Aww.